Okay, let's talk about old school math versus new school math. And uh, as you know, there's always these arguments and debates that are like, hey, the old school is better than the new school or the new school is better than the old school. And of course, this is uh, pretty common, you know, have these uh, generational debates. But uh, what I want to talk about in this video is just compare some of the things that were going on in the old school versus, say, the new school and take a look at, um, you know, uh, kind of the pros and cons, right? You know, old school versus new school. Now, again, these are relative terms because old school for some people could be like, well, if you're 20 years old, it might be like five years ago. Now, that was the old school, okay? Or it could be like 50 years ago. It just all depends, right? So, but I'm going to try to use technology as kind of a line uh, when technology really started to kind of come into play um, as the kind of our separating line between old school and new school. And this is going to be highly opinionated and really, um, you know, a lot of it comes from my own personal experience. But again, these old school versus new school uh, comparisons, you know, we have these debates all the time. Just very briefly, um, I, uh, from high school, I went into the United States Marine Corps at the tender age of 18, and that was the year 1987. So that brings me uh, to my 50s. That's, you know, my age. I'm uh, 53, will soon be 53. But um, anyways, uh, you know, the guys my age would be like, oh, that was old school Marine Corps. Well, it's, you know, yes, old school, but in, in terms of, you know, that was, things were different back in those days. But when I was in the Marine Corps, the guys in the 1960s, okay, that was old school or the 50s. So it's a relative term, okay? And if you're like 15 or 20 years old right now, 25 years old, guess what? 30 years from now, you'll be you'll be talking about, yeah, I remember back in 2022, uh, the good old days, da, 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 da. It's just is a constant debate that's been going on. But I really want to um, talk about, um, you know, old school in terms of, or old school versus the new school terms of technology because there's definitely were some pretty interesting uh, changes in terms of mathematics and how people experience learning math and I just want to kind of highlight from my own personal experience you know um, what I think were some good things and some uh, not good not I don't say not not bad things but just differences and comparisons so if you um, have nothing else to do, and you want to spend a couple minutes with me to kind of go back down memory lane and have this little quick comparison, old school versus new school. Well, then we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. You probably could figure that out. But um, over several, year, several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. So if you need to take a full math course or need assistance in your math uh, course that you might be taking, I can help you out. Okay, I got complete full lessons and I teach you how to solve thousands of problems, the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school math. If you're interested in uh, my program, you can find it by following the link in the description of this video. Now, if you happen to be a math student, um, there's one thing that I must stress to you after decades of teaching math. This is the golden rule. Those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who don't take any math notes or struggle with math notes typically suffer the consequences. Okay. So if you want to do well in math or you want to improve in math, look at your math notes. Now, um, obviously you need something to study from. So I actually offer um, great math notes, detailed, comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video as well. Okay, so if you want to just hang out with me for a few minutes and kind of go down uh, memory lane with me, old school versus new school, let me tell you what I think about these two comparisons, okay? All right, so old school, all right? So old school and new school, again, I'm in my 50s. So when I think of old school, of course, now this is me, okay? You, somebody could be 70 years old watching this video or 17. This is going to be different. But uh, when I think of old school, I think of um, those, let's say, uh, people that learn math in the uh, 50s, uh, 60s, uh, 70s. 
and 80s, okay? So I went to high school in the 80s and let's say middle school, middle school, high school in the 70s and uh, 80s, okay? Obviously high school in the 80s, but the technology here, I think the changes in technology in terms of, uh, of classroom experience, they were occurring, but they weren't as dramatic what was going on over here, right? So I'm gonna talk about new school here in a second. So when I went to high school in the 80s, uh, we still did a lot of manual calculations. Like let's say you had a trigonometry um, class, you would have to learn to use the tables in the back of these math books. Okay, now um, if you have a math book now, current math book, some of these books don't put uh, tables of values for trigonometric functions, let's say for example, in the back. Some do but nobody looks at them, okay? <laughs> Today, if you get, get a book, people, students would be like, yeah, they're there, they just might as well take them out because everyone ignores them. But back in the good old days, right, in the 80s or 70s, we would you learn how to use them. We would actually, you know, practice this uh, stuff. Now, in the 80s, we did have basic, uh, you know, we did have calculators, uh, scientific calculators, but we really didn't have um, graphing calculators, okay? Like a graphing calculator is something like a TI-83 or TI-84, which are amazing. If you've never seen one, you should just, you know, search it, do a Google search on it. But you can graph functions. I mean, they're very powerful. They're like basically handheld computers, but they're extremely uh, powerful. And I'm going to talk about when these guys came into play here in a second when I talk about the new school. So we didn't have that. We had to do a lot still by hand, even though we did have calculators. Um, calculators were just kind of, you know, really becoming, I'm going to say commonplace because in the 60s, all right, there was no, it, yes, they, maybe some engineers had some calculators. I think the first calculators, uh, real, real handheld calculators came in, out in like the beginning of the 1970s and these were for like engineers they were like thousands of dollars and didn't have anywhere near the functions that you know you you would have so in the 70s early 70s engineers were getting basic calculators so as the 70s were occurring you know going on yes calculators started slowly kind of coming into play and technology and then we you know in the 80s they started coming in you know, you know people could get calculators but still you know, there was still pretty pretty new going on here. But in the 50s and 60s, back in those days, they didn't have calculators at all. You would actually have, and this is, you know, prior to this, 40s and, and whatnot, you had something called a slide rule, which was like a little ruler with a little slide thing on it. And you would have to have to take a class. This was your calculator. And they were very accurate, okay? But you had to learn how to use this thing. And this thing would slide back and forth. There was little the little hashes and little tags on here, but you could do some pretty sophisticated math with a slide rule, okay? But so between a slide rule and table of values in books, that's, you know, there was a lot of manual calculation going on in this era, okay? So uh, when I think of old school, I think of this era really before, now for me, I was kind of like, mm, yes, we did have calculators, but in the 70s, you know, you weren't really messing with calculators, you know, as an elementary student, at least that I can remember, okay? It was a lot, of, still a lot of hand calculation and even into the 80s because people couldn't afford um, these calculators. You know, it wasn't like, you know, today you could pick up a basic scientific calculator for like 15 bucks, you know, it was like extremely powerful. And still in the 80s, they were pretty expensive. And if I remember correctly, I mean, um, our teachers would issue these things out. They would collect these things back in class. So, the, I think with the old school um, approach to mathematics, there was a lot of hand calculation. You know, you had to do a lot of manual calculation, and that required a lot of uh, practice with that, okay? So, um, you know, in terms of the old school, technology was limited. You know, yes, they did have computers, but that was for, like, engineers and whatnot. But as a regular old student, you had to uh, you not only do the problem, you had to do all the key. You, didn't, you, not, you had to do a math problem. Not only did you have to figure out how to, you know, how to do it, you had to do all the calculation uh, to get the right answer. So it was a, you know, a lot of uh, dependency on your arithmetic skills. Okay, so that was really, really stressed back in the good old days. Now, if you think about the, um, you know, accomplishments of old school math, think about 
what has occurred over the last, say, 100 uh, years, right? We had people go to the moon, okay, like the Apollo. Um, uh, if you've never been to NASA, uh, uh, that is in Florida, but that's um, where they would launch all the rockets. An amazing place. I highly suggested that at least one time in your life you go there. But you'll see all these old rockets and all their accomplishments. You just watch some of those old movies. It's absolutely amazing what they, uh, you know, accomplished, all these engineers and scientists. And guess what? Yes, they had access to some computers. I'm not saying they did, but they're not the kind of computers that you would think of today. I mean, they had big, huge mainframe computers. But the regular engineer, that kind of person, they're using uh, slide rolls and tables of values. They're, do, they're using manual calculations uh, to accomplish and figure out highly sophisticated, complex engineering problems. I mean, think about it. You know, they, you know, they sent somebody to the moon and back. Plus that, you know, look at all the amazing um, architecture, uh, civil engineering projects that were accomplished, you know, from dams, bridges, all this infrastructure, just, you know, aircraft, amazing, amazing stuff. Okay. So, Let's talk about the new school. So I stopped at the 80s, and I think the new school for me uh, was like the 90s, okay? And the 90s, the technology really started to pick up uh, pace. And I think people's experience in terms of learning started to look much different than, let's say, in the 80s. And in the, in the 80s, yes, they were starting to, you know, depending on what school district you went to, they were starting to use, you know, computers were kind of coming into play. But it wasn't, it was still pretty like new, I mean, it was like a, it was a big deal, right, to go to the computer lab, and I mean, there was nowhere near, you didn't have that, you didn't own that technology, you couldn't take that computer home, most students didn't have that kind of, uh, you know, yes, there was these basic computers, but I'm talking about uh, powerful computers that you, that you personally, if you're younger, you know, are used to dealing with, but in the 90s, uh, calculators started getting uh, much cheaper and better, and Somewhere along in the 90s, I don't know exactly when, uh, graphing calculators started coming out. They may have been around in the 80s, maybe for engineers and whatnot, but I'm talking about like the regular, let's say, high school students, the TI-83. I'm not sure exactly what year the TI-83 came out, but it's probably the late 90s, definitely the early 2000s. Uh, and this is an amazing uh, graphing calculator. I actually have a few of them. Um, and they're still very, very good for, even for today. And they're, these are expensive. I actually have a TI-84. If you're not familiar with this, uh, these calculators, you know, these calculators can cost you like $120 plus. So they're not cheap, but they're extremely powerful. And back in the day, these guys here were, were just amazing. I mean, like they're, you can graph, you know, functions, circles, and figure out all kinds of crazy problems. You could program, like, program, them, program them like a computer. So these calculators were not, you know, a part of my experience, okay, uh, in high school and middle school. These weren't around. So students in the 90s really started, you know, um, having access to much more personal technology, like uh, calculators, graphing calculators. And then, of course, the mid-90s, everything changed with the Internet, okay? The Internet was kind of, boom, this explosion started to happen. And I would say 95, from my experience, and it just started going crazy, okay? So each year afterwards, 96, 97, 98, I mean, uh, you know, people were, more people are online. The internet was just, you know, this information was just everywhere, okay? And the technology from, you know, online technology, computers, it was just, you know, growing exponentially. Not saying that technology wasn't growing exponentially in this era, but students' experiences with technology, their personal experience, learning, was, you know, yes, I mean, these guys were using um, slide rolls, and, you know, to use a slide roll and a, and a calculator is a pretty big leap going from a slide roll to a, a calculator, but we're not talking about, like, oh, here in the 90s, there was a huge jump from the 80s to the 90s, okay? We're talking about graphing calculators, the internet, software became uh, much more powerful, and it was just this huge push in uh, school districts to just have more and more computers, more and more technology. And you would see, you know, like the, the school book or the textbooks were just cramming more and more technology into it. And I think uh, rightfully so. I think they were trying to keep up with the age, you know, age, the error that was going on and explosive growth in technology. 
But I think what occurred, and this is this is when I was, you know, I've been teaching in the 2000s, is um, we lost a lot of our, you know, arithmetic skills. Okay, I'm not saying that students didn't learn arithmetic and basic math skills, but a lot of it was, you know, we didn't rely on that. Okay, we used our calculator much more than our hand, you know, ability to, you know, do. Uh, you know, calculations by hand, let's just say that. So a lot of the students, even though they were, you know, smart or capable, you know, if I took away their calculator, they might, you know, look at me like, hmm, you know, like, hmm, like, hey, <laughs> I'm not happy about that. So well, back in the good old days, guess what? We didn't have that. You need to, to know your arithmetic, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in the 90, we, 90s, we really started using technology and, and we really t- were able to explore much more sophisticated ways of learning math or seeing the results of learning math. So there was a lot of benefits for sure. Um, and this continues to, to uh, today. Okay. Now we're using, you know, uh, our, you know, computers in school, smart boards, uh, and everything else. And I think this is all appropriate. However, I think what, um, we have to be careful with is we can't lose too much of our basic math skills by just dependency on, um, uh, technology. Okay. And it's like, you still got to know how, you know, to do math with just a piece of uh, paper and a, a pencil, because really that's, the, um, that is mathematics. Okay. So I think for me as a teacher, although I saw exciting changes going on, it became a, a competition between teaching technology or trying to, you know, uh, keep in touch with, uh, those basic math skills. Okay by, you know, using paper and pencil uh, to keep up because it really this is the essence of teaching math and it became, it's kind of a competition because you don't have, you know, you only have so much time to teach math and I think a lot of teachers and educators struggled with, you know, how much technology should you have in the classroom should a student get versus just basic math concepts, etc. What should you know? Is, is one better than the other? Well, I can just tell you this much. You can have all the technology in the world, but if you don't understand the principles and concepts behind it, then, you know, you really aren't understanding mathematics. Okay. So, um, and I think this is where the old school approach was beneficial because we, we had to really understand those concepts. We had no choice because that's the, you know, you had to understand those concepts to op- op- apply them. But in the new school, um, the one thing that you do have to understand, which is different from the old school, is you have to understand how to use technology more, okay? Whether that be a calculator or a computer or et cetera. And, and, you know, and I think it's this is a constant struggle, um, and it, it doesn't have to be a right or wrong um, a question. You know, the old school is better than the new school. It's just trying to keep up with the times, okay? Keep up with changing um you know, technology, especially, you know, and educators and math education should always try to adjust towards the future. And it's always going to be a battle, you know, how much hand math should we do? And there's only a certain amount of time um, that you can teach. So again, I think there's good arguments to be made on how we should have more technology or versus less technology, et cetera, et cetera. But these are some comparisons of the ages. And if you look at, you know, like I was talking about the old school era, you know, uh, the accomplishments uh, that these amazing scientists, mathematicians, engineers, you know, were able to do, you know, just using a slide roll. But in the 90s, you know, we still had amazing breakthroughs uh, in, in technology um, uh, with computer science, you know, that's all mathematics. You know, just think about, you know, if you're old enough to remember you know, living in this era versus this era, just even the simple conveniences of, let's say, the internet and, uh, you know, high speed, high speed internet, uh, all the conveniences that we take for granted today. Guess what? Those are the benefits of uh, computer scientists, engineers, electrical engineers, physicists, you know, learning and applying uh, new ways of learning math and solving, you know, uh, problems faster by using technology, okay? So I don't think we can say that, oh, wow, you know, the old school was better because look at, they sent people to the moon. Well, we were able to do amazing stuff in the new school as uh, well, okay? But, uh, you know, if you were interested, you know, if you thought I was gonna give you one absolute answer, oh, the old school is better than the new school, no, I'm not gonna 
to do that. But um, this is from my own personal experience. I think I have a pretty good vantage point as well because, you know, I was a student here. My teachers, think about it, in the 70s, I remember being in elementary school back in the good old days where my first, second grade teacher, they used to smoke in the classroom, <laughs> which was pretty crazy. But my teachers went to school in the 60s and 50s and 40s. So this this area was kind of you know interlinked. But there was big changes as a student and as a teacher in this era, or as a student and a teacher uh, in the 90s and 2000s. You know, I think there was definitely major uh, differences to play. So that was my uh, choice to uh, separate my line between the old school and the new school. But guess what? Some of you out there that are 20 years old, 30, 40 years from now, you'll be telling your uh, kids or grandkids, right? back in the good old days of 2022, uh, you know, we used to do math and you buy these graphing calculators and they would be like, what, a graphing calculator is this? So it's all relative. Trust me, you'll have your stories to tell. You just got to wait another 30, 40 years. And who knows what the new school is going to be in uh, 30 or 40 years from now. I'd like to be around to find out because I'm sure it's going to be pretty crazy stuff for sure. So anyways, again, like I said, this video is based upon my experiences. And I try to keep uh, it, you know, of course, uh, my opinions, my experiences. And I don't want to uh, leave you with any absolutes. But I hopefully uh, you found it interesting in terms of, uh, you know, some old school stuff and some new school stuff. And if you ever get a, um, come across an old math book, okay, an old algebra book that's, you know, was in the 70s or 60s. I collect math books. You know, you're like, oh, this guy's a pretty weird guy. I have hundreds of math books. I just, I love to see it. But some of the old math books from like the 60s. Uh, or, you know, they were just amazing, okay? Especially in the 1960s, because in the 50s, um, the space race started really occurring, okay? During the Cold War, we had this race to the moon and to space, and that was a huge push for science, technology, and math. And you could see, the like, in the 60s, some of the uh, text were just beautiful books, just, wow, I mean, they're like... Really, really impressive. But so if you ever come across one, just scan through them. You know, maybe your parents or your grandparents have have ones you know, they kept for whatever reason. Um, check it out. Okay, just take a look. They're pretty. You know, a great place to find books, by the way, um, or to scan. It's like secondhand stores, like a Goodwill, whatnot. They have like old books. Sometimes I'll go to these places just to scour and look for old books because, you know, obviously can't find them anymore. But when you do, if you ever take a look at one, take a look at the tables and just kind of see how math was taught, okay, and how it was emphasized. Pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so if this video in some way entertained you, okay, maybe you liked it in some manner, and if you did, please consider smashing that like button. I would definitely appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. If you need help in math, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of math videos. It's been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. So uh, they're organized in various playlists. So those videos are there for you. I love teaching math and I'm teaching new math uh, topics all the time. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. But if you want my best uh, work, follow the links in the description of this video. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.